Hi there. For this video, we'll be evaluating this summation from 1 to infinity of 2 over x cubed plus 6x squared plus 11x plus 6. So we start by observing that this denominator can be factored out. First, observe that this has a factor of negative 1. Indeed, if we substitute negative 1, we have negative 1 cubed plus 6 negative 1 squared plus 11 times negative 1 plus 6. That's, that is equal to negative 1 plus 6 minus 11 plus 6. Adding this all up would result to 0. So, um, Negative 1 is indeed a root of this one. So we divide uh, negative 1 or x plus 1 out here. And we do that by applying synthetic division. So applying synthetic division give us 1, 6, 11, and 6. Oops. So bring down the 1 out here. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, so this would be 5. Times negative 1 is negative 5, so this would be 6. Times negative 1 is negative 6. So this implies that this resulting um, expression can be factored into x plus 1 times x squared plus 5x plus 6. And we know that. We can factor this one out into x plus 3 and x plus 2. So we have already factored out the denominator into its linear factors. So let's write out this one in that way. So we have summation of infinity. Wait, let's just focus first on the fraction inside. So we have 2 all over x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x plus 3. Now the next thing that we would do here is to apply the concept of partial, partial fractions. That is, we can actually write this one as, you put a, b, and c out here all over x plus 1 plus x plus 2 plus x plus 3. Now our goal here is to find the values of a, b, and c. So we start by multiplying x plus 1, x plus 2, and x plus 3 to this whole equation. So on the left side, we would simply have 2. Then on the right, we'll have a times x plus 2 times x plus 3 plus b times x plus 1 times x plus 3 plus c times x plus 1 times x plus 2. Now simplifying these, these uh, expressions, would give us 2a times, this one is x squared plus 5x plus 6 plus b times, this one is x squared mm, plus 4x plus 3. And lastly, we have c times x square plus 3x plus 2. And then next thing we do is we distribute the a, b, and c in the expression inside. So this would give us 2 is equal to, um, starting with a, so that is ax squared plus 5ax plus 6a 
plus for b we have b x squared plus 4b x plus 3b lastly for c we would have um, c x squared plus 3 c x plus 2 c so let's clear out some space out here and so now we compare or first we um, group the like terms out here so for x squared we have a so let's underline that one, this one, the x squared. So we have a plus b plus c times x squared. Then for the x, we have 5ax, 4bx, and 3cx. So that is 5a plus 4b plus 3cx. And lastly, we have 6a, 3b, and 2c as the constant. So we have 6a plus 3b plus 2c. So we now compare the left side from the right side. By that I mean this left side and this whole right side. So for this equality to be true, we know that this one must be equal to 0 since we don't have a variable of x squared out here. Oops. Then this one must also be equal to 0 since we don't have a variable x on the left side. On the other hand, this last one must be equal to 2. This implies that we will have a system of equation where with a plus b plus c is equal to 0, 5a plus 4b plus 3c is equal to 0, and 6a plus 3b plus 2c is equal to 2. So let's clear out this one. Right there. And let's move this up. So let's denote these as 1, equation 1, equation 2, and equation 3. So there are many ways that we can do to get the values of a, b, and c. But what I would do is, first, I would have equation 2 minus 3 times equation 1. So that would give us, equation 2 is 5a plus 4b plus 3c equals 0 times 3 of equation 1. So that is 3a plus 3b plus 3c is equal to 0. Then we subtract this one. So the reason that I chose this one is because I first aim to get the value of a. So subtracting this would give us the 3c would cancel out, leaving us with 2a plus b equals 0. So take we take note of this one. And then we can also have 3 minus 2 times 1. So this one is, 3 is, um... 6a plus 3b plus 2c equals 2 minus 2 times equation 1 so that is 2a plus 2b plus 2c equals 0. Subtract this one. So subtracting this would give us 4a plus b. So the c would cancel out equals 2. And so now we can have this one minus the 
first one we got. So that would give us 4a plus b equals 2 minus 2a plus b Oops. equals 0. So subtracting this would cancel b, leaving us with 2a is equal to 2. Or simply, a is equal to 1. So that is the first one that we got. So we got a equals 1. So we take note of that one. Let's put it up here. And then we can substitute 1. And let's say here, let's substitute a equals 1 up there. So we have 2 times 1 plus b equals 0 would give us um, oops, wait a second, there, would give us 2 plus b is equal to 0 which is simply b equals negative 2. So we have also found the value of b to be negative 2. So the only one left is to get the value of c. Now we try to use this one out here. So from equation 1, we have a plus b plus c equals 0 would now be 1 minus 2 plus c equals 0 or negative 1 plus c equals 0 or simply c equals 1 and now we have found all the values of a b as well as c so we plug in these values to the partial fraction that we have out here so let's clear out some things And this one. So there we have simplified this uh, given expression inside the summation as A is equal to 1, B is equal to negative 2, or we simply have negative 2 out here, and C, oops, C is 1. So a very lengthy process, but there, are, but there is a reason why we did that. So let's remove this one, and we can write this summation from infinity to x equals 1 as this one. Now observe that if we try out some values. So first at x equals 1 we will have 1 uh, 1 over 1 plus 1 is 2 minus 2 over 3 plus 1 over 4. Then we have 1 over, um, so this time it's x equal to, so this is 3 minus 2 over 4 plus 1 over 5 plus we have 1 over 4 minus 2 over 5 plus 1 over 6 then plus this time it's x equals 4, so what is, so that is 1 over 5 minus 2 over, mm, this one is 2 over, I think it is 2 over 6 plus 1 over 7 plus, let's just try this as one, so 1 over 6 minus 2 over 7 plus 1 over 8 and so on up to infinity. Observe here that this one out here 
would be cancelled out by the one fourth out here and the one fourth out here. This one out here would be cancelled out by the one fifth out here and the one fifth out here. Uh, this 2 over 6 out here would be cancelled out by 1 over 6 and 1 over 6 out here. So as you can observe, all the terms would actually cancel out since this one would be cancelled. This 2 over 7 would be cancelled out by 1 over 7 out here and somewhere out here and so on. So all these terms, this one would also be cancelled out by uh, the negative 2 over 8 that we will have in the following terms. So as you can observe, all of this would actually cancel out. So this one would be gone, this one would be gone out here, this one would all be cancelled out, and we're actually going to be left with only this one, this one, and this one. So, removing that one, this one actually simplifies into 1 over 2 minus 2 over 3 plus 1 over 3. And we can actually solve this already with our knowledge on fractions. So this one out here would be equal to 1 half minus 1 over 3. Then we can apply the butterfly method out here or simply this one, multiply this one cross multiplication so we have 3 and 2 since it's subtraction we put subtraction here all over the um the multiplication of the denominator so that is 6 or simply 1 over 6 and that is the answer for this one so yeah this problem is quite lengthy really a lot of things to need to consider but the important part here is the partial fraction part. So if you don't know partial fractions, you need to review on that one since that is essential to be able to observe that there is a pattern out here. Because if we simply try to substitute this one out here, this one would become 2 all over so 1 plus 6, 7, plus 11, 17, plus 6, 24, plus 2 all over. The denominator is 2 cubed is 8, plus 6 times 2 squared is 4. So this one is 24. 8 plus 22, 11 times 2 plus 6. And this one would simplify into 20, 22 plus 8. 60. So I wouldn't continue this anymore, but as you can see, there isn't really a pattern that would go on out here that would help us in simplifying this problem. So you really need to take note of partial fractions. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Feel free to comment down below if you have another solution to this one, probably a shorter one since this one is very long. Yeah, but I hope you got an insight on how to solve this one. And yeah, glad that we're able to reach this point. And yeah, that's all for this video.